Hello. Hello, welcome everyone to another episode of Montgomery's Meaningful Monday. We just want to welcome everyone to our page. Shout out to the new subscribers. Remember, we're just here to encourage the body of Christ and also to just be um, a beacon of, of light to those who are in darkness, to those who may not be aware of the blessing of Jesus and, and the blessing and, and beauty of salvation. And so for this week, our message is where's the purpose in this a message to those who are suffering um me and my husband and a few others have been reading through the book of job as we read through the bible in a year chronologically and we all know well we may not all know but if you do not know the story of job is about a man who was righteous in his faith that loved the lord but went through a season of suffering and so we're going to just start off and i'm just going to share something that was that was laid upon my heart. The sufferings we currently face in this world were not a part of God's original design, which is why we fixate on cause and effect. We teach sayings like bad things happen to bad people, good things happen to good people. And when it seems to be reversed, we ask the question, why does bad things happen to good people? people? Or the reverse, right? Why is this bad person being blessed? When no answer is given to these questions, we grow bitter in our search and we grow more distant from our God. Although our mind struggled to conceive the purpose behind our suffering, we must learn to cope in Christ. There is no one shoe foot fits all when it comes to how we suffer, or how we should suffer, or how we should view suffering. But I just want to share some encouraging words that may help someone who is suffering. Or at the end of the day, I look at it like this. You may be suffering now, you have suffered in the past, or you will suffer in the future. Because none of us can actually avoid it, which is something my husband will talk about. Um, but I'm, my, my, my prayer and my hope is that the words that we give today will help to alleviate you when you go through um, your seasons of suffering. Don't let your suffering distort your view of God. One thing that if, if you read the, the book of Job or have read it, one thing that he did in the very beginning, when, he, when, when, when everything was told to him, he lost his children, he lost his wealth, his health began to fail. The first thing he did was worship. In the beginning, his view of God was not distorted. Instead, I believe that we should suffer with God, remembering that he is touched by the feelings of our infirmities, which is in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. God is the God of all comfort. This is stated in 2 Corinthians um, chapter 1, 3 to 4. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. He comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any kind of affliction through the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Um, when it says he's a God of all comfort, I look at it as meaning he uniquely comforts each of his children through their affliction. Yep. It's, it's a reason why he said of all comfort. We all need different types of comfort as we walk through different trials or different testings, right? And so rest in that knowing that he will comfort me through my unique affliction. There's depth to God only a suffering heart can know. What do I mean by that? In Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 it says, My goal, this was Paul speaking, My goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. And so I truly believe that there is depth to God that we can only know or only witness or only have those things revealed to us when we're going through suffering. You, you even see that through the book of Job. As he's struggling, as he's wrestling with God, as he's wrestling with his friends, there's revelations about God that's being revealed. There's even revelations about Jesus that were revealed in the book of Job. We serve a God who is well acquainted with sorrows. Yes. Yet, in his presence is fullness of joy. I'm going to read Isaiah 53 verse 3 for this one. It's talking about Jesus. It says, he was despised and rejected by men. A man of suffering or some virgins say, a man of many sorrows. 
who knew what sickness was. He was like someone people turned away from. He was despised and we didn't value him. The reason I put these two together is although our God is acquainted with sorrow, a man, you know, Jesus walked this earth as a man of many sorrows, yet in his presence was fullness of joy, yet he still had joy, yet he laughs. It, it talks about in the word world, I, he rejoices over us, right? He sings songs of deliverance over us. So letting us know that even in your sorrow, there is joy. Even in your sorrow, there's a song that you can sing. And so that would, that will be my encouragement to those of you who are suffering. So here's some few things I want you to consider when you're reading through the book, book of Job and what the book of Job says about suffering. First thing, suffering is unavoidable in this fallen world. We see that suffering happens to Job even though he was considered a righteous man. This is Job chapter 1 verse 1. There was a man in the country of Uz named Job. He was a man of perfect integrity who feared God and turned away from evil. Whenever we face hardships in this world, it's not always a form of punishment. Sometimes God uses suffering to prove and to purify us. Mm -hmm. We see this in Job chapter 1 verse 8 to 11. Because Job walked a blameless life with the Lord, he ended up facing this tragedy of losing his, his house, his children, his wealth, and even his health as a test of faith that the Lord knew that he would pass. Worship God because of who he is, not because of what he gives. This is Job chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. His wife said to him, Do you still retain your integrity? Curse God and die. You speak as a foolish woman speaks, he told her. Should we accept only good from God and not adversity? Throughout all this, Job did not sin in what he said. When we shift our focus from thanking God for what he gives us, for reverencing him to who he is, then we can avoid being overwhelmed by the suffering that may come into our life. How would your worship change if everything was taken away and all you had left was God? How would your praise change? How would your walk with him change if everything else was taken away and all you had left was God? Would you still worship him? Would you worship him on top of the ash heap? Would you worship him with zero money in your account? Would you worship him with no home? Would you worship him with no relationship? Would, would you worship him without that family? Even in your worst suffering, God is still there and he is still faithful. Job chapter 23 verse 10. Yet he knows the way I have taken. When he has tested me, I will emerge as pure gold. Even in the midst of our trials, they can push us closer to God. In the case of Job, he didn't fully understand his suffering, but he did not give up on God. He just had to give up his prior understanding of who God is. Although we may not fully know our sufferings and why we suffer loss in this world, we can have comfort knowing that we have a mediator who took on the full blunt of our suffering so that we may be redeemed. Listen, I don't know what the reason why you're suffering through what you're suffering through, but just know that we have a mediator and a savior who has taken on our sin mm -hmm. and he has suffered for our sake so that we can be redeemed. That is what worship truly is. Yes, thanksgiving, you know, for the things that we have is great. But how about just being thankful for who God is? How about turning our worship to just add a admiration of his of his glory of his beauty like um the psalmist said he, he just wanted to to literally gaze upon his the beauty of the lord mm -hmm. you know i'm not coming for anything i'm just coming to gaze that also helps us when we do go through suffering or when something does happen that we weren't expecting when we're already in a, a heart posture like my husband said of i'm just gonna reverence you for who you are that will that will travel and go with you from suffering to not suffering mm -hmm. from having food to not having food from being clothed to not being clothed because through all of those things through the ups and the downs guess what he is the same mm -hmm. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so this concludes our message for today. And we just want to say, go out there and make today meaningful. In Jesus' name, blessings and peace, y'all.